go live. We gonna go live. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't be right if I didn't say it. It wouldn't be right if you didn't say it. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to you. So welcome, 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 everybody. Welcome to our Live Use Brunch and Munch, our Saturday edition. Every Saturday, with the exception of some holidays where we will not be showing up because we'll be doing our own personal self-care during those times. My name is Ciara Wimby, and I am the CEO and founder of Live You Nonprofit. I am also the self-care coach for physical wellness. I am Cicely Beckham, not the founder or the CEO, <laughs> no. <laughs> no, but <laughs> I am the mental wellness coach, clearly came in with the jokes this morning. <laughs> That's what crazy people do. <laughs> and good morning. I am Stephanie Poe. I am the spiritual wellness coach, understanding that sometimes we have a human experience, so it's all right if we got to correct a bitch. <laughs> Yes. We went to jump this morning. <laughs> Look, <laughs> thankfully. <laughs> well, you know, everything can't always be so serious. We live in such an extremely serious world. Um, uh -huh. So it, it's, it's nice to be able to laugh and not just laugh, but also because, you know, just it's, it's just so much happening. And so we, we need laughter to heal the soul. So with that said, um, let's talk about some house rules real quick. Uh, so any of the audience members that um, are on, um, please make sure that you mute your, um, your what is it, the microphone um, until it's time to come on in and, and, and give your, your information. And if you don't wanna be seen, please make sure that you also mute your cameras. Then also we want to make sure that we are being respectful of people and what they're saying. So make sure that uh, you allow people to speak. And also when you're responding, give maybe like a two minute response. If not, Cicely, our, our uh, bam, 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 bam. manager person, <laughs> let you know that you've gone way too long. Mm -hmm. um and then <laughs> that's so funny for me <laughs> um and then more importantly than anything else we want to make sure that everybody is having the best time of their lives that's that is the whole point here have fun have fun <laughs> <laughs> have to do my one dance <laughs> so Live You um, is a nonprofit organization and our focus is to help women practice self-care. What a day. Every day. single day. And so uh, last week we were talking about a focus of mental wellness and Cicely was leading that for us. So if you didn't see that, please go to our YouTube channel and go check that out, which is our YouTube channel is Live You Nonprofit. Go look that up or we'll have it somewhere for people in our newsletters and things like that. So today we are covering physical wellness and um, I am the physical wellness coach so they keep telling me that I'm supposed to be the person that talks about this today and so <laughs> let's keep physical physical, physical. <laughs> Too bad I don't have on uh, I don't have a headband and uh, <laughs> have on me some with a little wristbands and stuff like that and my little uh, what was his name Richard um Richard Simmons. Simmons Richard Simmons um thank out. you mama with the uh silent <laughs> <How about? laughs> so, <laughs> so um keeping along this the structure of what Cicely said for us during mental wellness I looked up what physical meant so there's no definition per se for physical wellness, but physical is relating to the body as opposed to the mind, relating to things perceived through the senses as opposed to the mind, tangible or concrete, 
um, and then also pleasant physical environments. So for me, when I hear all of those things and I think about the physical experience, um, we're experiencing our physicalness through our personal body. So that's this, um, our extended body, which is our home, um, our external body, which could be considered like if we were going into the workspace, some people aren't in a workspace or it's like Ms. Valerie, she's in her car space right now. So she's in, you know, that external environment um, or I would also then say your environmental body. And I consider your environmental body being your community. So when you're out and about outside, that's part of your community. So I see we have some new people coming on. Just make sure that you mute your microphones. And um, if you don't want to be seen on camera, make sure that you mute your camera. So um, I think peekaboo too. Hey, that's right. People coming in, people coming and going. So we'll be monitoring that movement coming and going. So last week, like I said, we talked about um, the mental and emotional wellness and how the stress um, moves into your actual physical body and how it can show up. And so when we talk about showing up, not just in, in when I say our physical bodies, I mean, our again, our body that we exist in, but then also your home, because there's times that I've been to people's homes and I could tell some things was going on in their mental space because it was displayed in their physical space. Um, also work and then also in your community. So, so let, like, let's just give an example of like community being like um, an urban city, right? As opposed to a suburb, suburb. So I've grown up in the urban city of Chicago. So when I tell people I'm from Chicago, a lot of times I meet other people and they're like, oh yeah, me too. You know, I'm from Downers Grove. That is a suburb of Chicago. That is not the city of Chicago. That is a total difference. That is I didn't even control my face. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I think I did it for you, Cicely. That was <laughs> no different than, um, so again, I grew up in the physical city of Chicago, but then from like 22 forward um, for most of the time up until I moved here I lived in the suburbs of Chicago so there is a difference and depending on the suburb you're in some suburbs could be just as rough as the city but I did not live in a rough suburb I actually lived in the Naperville Aurora area and so it was very you're bougie, bougie. <laughs> <laughs> so very calm and serene and then when you would go um and into the city and again not everywhere in the city is um let's say um hood. okay <laughs> I'm from the hood, hood. You mean the hood, hood? <laughs> she would come and visit me in the hood hood it's okay <laughs> <laughs> like let me let me come on with so Cicely and I'm from Chicago. We're both from Chicago. So um there's and, and and this is when I'll give it a quick example of what it could look like in different spaces. I lived in what's considered the wild hundreds when I lived in Chicago and I lived on 108, 48 South Prairie. Not afraid because y'all can't come by. I don't live there anymore. Um, and that was considered the wild, wild hundreds. And it was in the Roseland area. And I can remember, you know, you hear the bumping beats. You hear um, uh, sirens. You hear all this noise. So noise pollution we'll you know say noise pollution in my physical community of where i lived in my environment and i was used to that you may hear some gunshots i was used to that i moved to the suburbs and i remember laying in the bed and i heard crickets <laughs> literally like it wasn't like it was quiet and you're like oh cr no literal crickets 
And me and my mom had both moved out there. And I told my mother I couldn't sleep at night because I did not hear the urban sounds of the jungle. I, I was hearing nature's quietness. And I didn't like nature's quietness. It was disturbing my uh physical body wellness because I had been trained for a certain type of soothing um, harmony to help me go to sleep. And it was not quiet. <laughs> um, so those are the things when I talk about in terms of um, that environmental um, difference. So I just wanted to make sure I gave a, a clear vis a version of that. So in our bodies, what can show up when we're having emotional or um, stress <clears throat> or mental stress, we could have illnesses, disease and disorders. And there's almost not one person I don't know that they don't have something. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, they may not have some full onset, long term, whatever, but everybody has something. So I know, like, for me, um, in which I, I may be one of the only people I don't know. I mean, I do know that doesn't have anything that I claim anymore. So, but in my past, I have been diagnosed with um, Crohn's, um, I was uh, anemic. So I had various different things that were wrong with me. And so I, you know, went about healing myself and healing myself with uh, not just about the foods we eat, because we talk about that one all the time, about food that you intake. But um, really, it was more than just the food. It was what I was allowing in my mind, what I was allowing in my space, what I was um, how I was interacting with my environment. And so that helped move me along. So then we also have where we could have issues in our, in our home. So like I said, I, I've been to a couple people's houses where I could tell something was wrong with them because if there's a lot of stuff and over just stuff, I've, I've, there's a lot going on in their mind. That's how I equate the two. If you have a lot going on in your home, a lot of um, disorder or a lot of overage of things. I'm like, okay, they have a lot happening in their mind, their mental space where they're not able to, um, they're not able to organize that properly, or they're not able to let some things out that uh, Cicely was talking about last time, how we need to release and let go of some things. And th there's this, we're holding on to stuff. And that's not even talking about getting to the level of where, you know, people become hoarders, but this is just organization, just having a lot of things um, or your home isn't clean. Like we're not sanitizing our home and things like that. And so those can be signs that, you know, there's some physical, mental things happening in your space. Um, and then when we talk about being at work, uh, you, not organized or not clean. So um, those are some things that, you know, you just need to start paying attention to to start looking and seeing what's wrong. And then as, you know, I talked about a few seconds ago in terms of the community, maybe your community isn't clean. Um, I remember growing up this next door neighbor at my, um, in Memphis and my grandmother's uh, next to ne her next door neighbor. Um, and she would, I can remember her always, she would sweep her porch, but then she would sweep the, in front of my grandma house, in front of her house. And then it was like up and down the block. Like she was, it, she extended her cleaning pattern from, from the internal house to outside her house to in her community, because it was important for her to make sure that the community looked well too. It wasn't just, you know, for her, her personal home. And so we, and even like air pollution, noise pollution, you know, things like that. Those are things that affect us. And we don't think it affects us. Like I said, when I moved to a different environment, I didn't think that it living in the, the hood was affecting me until I was no longer living in the hood. And I said, oh, wait a minute, I don't like hood living. And I don't want to return back to hood living because it really is affecting my mental wellness. It's affecting 
my physical wellness. It was affecting how I was um, engaging with my body and with myself. And so um, any questions so far? Any Anything anybody wants to hop in? Well, one, I'm gonna hop in because right before we jumped on, I'm like, girl, I was cleaning. So that's so funny. Yeah. <laughs> Must have caught the vibes. <laughs> <laughs> but no, um, but I had to do that because when I finish this, I have mental work to do and I need my space to be clear because if not, I'm like, what is that? You know, just, stop, you know, keep on stopping and focusing on other things rather than giving attention to what I need to do. So you're right about that. And I also just to think back, I remember when um, now I lived in a, you know, I've always lived in the urban areas of you, <laughs> <laughs> whatever. Um, but you know, you, it's good pockets in urban areas. So when I went away to school, my dorm sat on a main street. And like you said, fire trucks, car horns, everything. I used to toss it around like, what is this? So of course I I adjusted because you know, Cicely ain't gonna miss no sleep. I don't care if it's fireworks going off, I'm asleep. So, but I got so used to the noise and being able to fall asleep in that. When I got home, I'm like, it's quiet. <laughs> okay, let me, so I need to, I had to turn the TV on just to give myself the background noise, just to give myself that peace so I could sleep. So understanding like the things that we just didn't pay attention to that we don't pay attention to, because now that I'm out here in LA and I'm like, would they shut up? I didn't know I lived on the main street. What is that? I'm, I'm the old grumpy lady out the window hollering at people like nosy. Now I'm looking at parking lot wars and stuff like, oh, it's a spot like that. She should get it. So, you know, but like, it's it's crazy, but yes, when you start to pay attention to your environment and what you're letting in, it really makes a difference on how you start to filter that. So I just wanted to add that in. Thank you, thank yes, you. And yeah, and people in that environment also plays an effect on your physical wellness as well. So I, not from Chicago, um, but whenever I do meet people that are from Chicago, I'd be like, are you really from Chicago? Are you, are you from like somewhere else from Chicago? Because that ain't Chicago. <laughs> Lancaster, whatever. That's not Chicago. I got cousins in Chicago. So I'm not, you know, um, I'm not from Chicago. I'm from the country, the sticks. So where it takes you a good 30 minutes to drive into a town where the miles per hour is about 35. And then 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes later, the tour is over. You, you've seen the whole town. So I'm from the sticks in the country. There's no cell phone reception. There's no nothing. Though I've been um, in different parts of the U.S. where there's been a lot of hood activities that I've been privy to. So uh, with that said, um, I've had a different viewpoint of urban and suburban and country living. And I can definitely say that those three different environments definitely plays a a part on the physical wellness because you have a different mindset you have a different viewpoint when you're in the country there's nothing I've been so accustomed to the city life that when I go home it's beautiful I don't mind not having my phone I don't mind not being connected to a person because I have so much that I'm doing in the city that when I go home, it's like a breath of fresh air, but I can always stay there for so long because I I, I have road rage. I need to, somebody need to hear my horn. So um, <laughs> my horn. somebody need to hear my horn. So I come back to the city and I'm hearing everything. I'm hearing the trucks, I'm hearing the fires, I'm hearing all of it. Um, but I also live off the beaten path, so to speak. So I'm not really on front street but it still takes a toll on my physical because I like the quiet. I miss the quiet. I make sure I have it in my home. And I say to many people, you can deal with whatever you want to deal with outside of your home. But when you go home, that's your place of zen. You leave all the other stuff outside the door. Your home is your place of zen. It should be where you can relax. You can kick your feet up. You can do whatever you want to do in your home. It's your home. And so it's important to have your home tailored to how you feel mentally, spiritually, and physically. And if you do have a lot of clutter everywhere, then yeah, you got a lot of stuff going on in your mind. You really do, because it shows. I got a lot of stuff all over my dresser because I was up to two o'clock in the morning because I had a lot of stuff on my mind. But also, I didn't go run this week. 
So because I didn't go running this week, I'm having a lot of that energy coming off into different areas in my house or coming off into different areas in my life because I've accessed energy. So I need to figure out what I'm going to do with that physicalness because it's affecting me. Not running has affected my living space. Not running has affected different areas in my life that I didn't even realize it did. I like that. I like that you pointed that out because running that's your exercise as part of your physical wellness but then your mm -hmm. home is an extension of your physical wellness so there are a lot of different aspects to what makes up or constitute our physical wellness and if we're not moving something somewhere then something is going to get stuck and mm -hmm. we're going to see where it's being stuck at if we're not paying um extreme attention to it one thing that i just thought about we also did not talk about what some people uh may have shared with us on facebook this week and i had some uh i had some pictures i mean i took some pictures of what people had said but i totally i mean and it wasn't on facebook it was on instagram okay so let me just i want to read those real quick before I give you all um, some tips for physical wellness. So That's I had to, so just in case. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And and normally Cicely's the person for this well, because I didn't share them with her, like trying to text them to her and get it. Like it's just, it's, it's, it's too much. It's too much. I'll just read them. It's okay. <laughs> so I had one person say, um, working towards exercise in class three times a week it's in the making. And this is actually someone that was one of my yoga students previously. So I was like, okay, okay, you got this girl, you can do it. Um, and then I had another person say my physical wellness practice I started is stretching. It really helps me to become more flexible, less pain and meditate in a way. So those were a couple that I got on my social media, Cicely. What you got? Well, actually, the last one you did was the same one that I got. Oh, so I won't repeat it because it's my friend. Hey, friend. Hey, friend. <laughs> and so, um, but I will add that I've changed my physical wellness thing just by taking more supplements, um, researching and knowing just not, you know, you know, you could take a multivitamin and you don't know what's in it. Like they say, take it. Who is they? Right. <laughs> All day. <laughs> no, but, so I actually did some research and have a great friend who is a, a, a herbalist. And so she created some really great supplements and was able to get them out to me. So I started them and girl, I've just been like, why do I have so much energy? What is that? Oh my God. Like, like superpowers kicked in. <laughs> and so just being able to take care of my physical wellness, knowing that I am protecting myself from all type of craziness that's going on inside of my body that it, you know, just unaware of. And then also with my exercise practices, I just been more consistent with getting up. I do. I laugh because I always be talking about Sierra like, oh, here she go with this yoga in the bed. And then here I go like, oh, it's a good place to stretch right here in this bed. Oh, <laughs> let me do a sit up because it's comfortable. Here. <laughs> like, so just I started doing like a legit 15 minute core workout before I even get out the bed. That's if it I don't have to jump warm up you. It's like it helps warm you up. It's you already nice yeah. and cozy, and then it just kind of like, and then you're ready to get out the bed. It's like mm -hmm. it was a, a prep for getting out to go do some more exercise. Exactly. So, mm -hmm. but then I be hitting my Apple Watch because I feel like if I work out and I don't record it, it's not right. So I don't know what's wrong with me there, <laughs> but it's okay because I feel like I cheated myself. Like I want to see it. So that's the thing about our thing. My physical being needs to see that I, it something tracked my progress. Mm -hmm. And so that's what works for me. So, and I'll just be competing with it, but don't let my watch not track that progress. Oh, I'll be salty, like real attitude. Like <laughs> now I got to do it again. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so um, that's been something that I've changed just in the last month or not even, yeah, it's not the month, it's not over, but in the last couple of days, um, we're just getting it together on my, on the physical side. So, and then of course, everybody still know I'm 31 days of juicing and yeah, Killing that, as you see, look at my skin, y'all. I ain't never glowing, had no skin like this. Glowing, <laughs> no. looking like a good. Good for good show. And look at me not drinking water, y'all. I, right. I drink 96 ounces of water a day. 
Whoa. I love bathroom, but it's okay. It's working. <laughs> <laughs> because it's getting those toxins up out of your body. Yes. So those are my things. Cool, cool. Um, so actually one of, I had someone who commented on one of our physical wellness posts and the physical wellness post, I'm gonna read it. Uh, the doctor of the future will no longer treat the human frame with drugs, but rather will, will cure and prevent disease with nutrition. That's by Thomas Edison. And a lady commented and she said, I would love to see this. And so I replied that I agree with her, but before we, but before getting to the doctor, we must first change our dieting, our eating, and our ways of thinking, especially when it comes to illnesses. We must first change before we want others to change. So I share that because that is exactly what it is. Before going to the doctor and saying, hey, I'm sick, <laughs> come help me, um, diagnose yourself first. You know you better than anybody. You know your body. You know, we, and ladies, we say this, We especially when we're trying to correct somebody like, <laughs> I know my body. You can't tell me not. So you know your body when you get sick. It's the same thing. So before going to the doctor, because they are going to dope you up, they're going to give you a whole bunch of medicines, diagnose yourself first. Go through your patterns. What did you do or did not do or change within the last week? What's coming to your, into your physical space? What's coming to your environment that's, gave you, that's giving you a change? Because stress is something that you can't necessarily see all the time. But you're going to definitely feel it later. It's going to come out in various forms. So you're going to feel that stress. So did somebody or something stress you out, which causing you to have, you know, anxiety or shortness of breath, or you just tired all of a sudden? Like, what is it? Because stress attacks you in so many different ways, which is why it's important to physically move those things out of your space. And just with me, as I've said before, I'm water. I have to move. So not moving for a whole week, I'm standing still, I'm stagnant. I'm trying to figure out what is it that is wrong with me because I'm not sleeping. Like I, I but I'm not stressed out. I'm, I'm good, but why am I not sleeping? I'm not moving around because there are things that are on my mind. It's not necessarily stressing me out, but it's things that's priority. I'm trying to organize some things, but I can't organize if I'm not physically moving that organization around. Even if it's just straightening up some papers, if it is just running, I run to clear my head. I run. To, it's just a mental thing. I run to clear my mind. But with me not running, everything is in one space. I can't get any clarity anywhere. And I'm thinking everybody else is crazy. No one really is. No. And yeah, it's everybody else. <laughs> and and I, want to, I want to piggyback off of something Stephanie said, especially when she said, you know, do some um, self-diagnosis. And even if you need to go to the doctor, because, you know, people still may need to go to the doctor, but mm -hmm. I would say do that scan because when you do go to the doctor, they're going to ask you certain questions anyway. They're going to ask you, you know, what have you done differently lately? Um, what have you been eating? You know, are you stressed out? Like they're going to ask you something. So be ready to answer those because you need to, to know what you, what your patterns are so you can let them know what your patterns are. And I mean, even medical professionals all the time, when they are talking about um, prevention of uh, health uh, challenges or illnesses or diseases and disorders. Nutrition, they talk about that, you know, change your diet. They talk about exercise. And so um, the, the medical community will tell you those same things. It's, the thing is, we just wanna go to the doctor and have them tell us things um, and give us a prescription as opposed to doing the work of changing the diet and doing the exercise because those are things that are preventive care that is promoted by the medical field. So they definitely do that. One of the things that I'm good at, I'd be like, my mom and the doctor, look, what's this? Look at this, what's this? So sometimes you, 
you know, we like to, we don't like to go to the doctor. I know my generation, doctor's not our friend. Like we, as we get older, we're learning like, oh, okay, let me go check that out. Because so when you see people your age and younger just dropping dead, you're like, oh, wait, it, hit, it do hit different. But I know for me, I'm my ma, ma, what's this? Ma, can, can you? And I, in my head, she like doctor, lawyer, she got superpowers. Right. That it's, was my mother. My mother was the all, all encompassing, all knowing being. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So sometimes our moms don't know, and it's okay to do some research yourself. You know, even though uh, Google will have you be like, oh my God, I got cancer. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but really, I was just to start, do more than do dig a little deeper than just that first little right. thing that pop up on there to see like look at for real like what's your side effects what's what's really going on? your eye been twitching how long it's been twitching because you know you just got mama what do you mean with my eye twitch i don't know you stress somebody talking about you you looking too hard you know <laughs> they come up with all type of things that you know you probably could think of on your own but sometimes we just don't want to put that brain power that work in and then we let people tell us what's wrong with us and then mm-hmm. dope us up, like you said, with all these meds that never solve the issue. And now you're wondering, like, what's what wrong else with me? What is wrong with me? Because now you got a new set of things wrong with you. Because the side effects yeah. of that medicine like, might because cause the death. And we'll tell you <laughs> all the extra stuff is doing to you. And th- I mean, that's part of why I made a decision to um, just change how I lived so that I could live because mm-hmm. my prognosis was not one that was going to have me on a living journey. Um, if if I would have stayed in the capacity that the medical professionals were giving me as my lifespan, I would not be here right now doing what I do. Mm-hmm. So, you, you, you have to make decisions. Um, for yourself. So I want to give some tips. Um, I actually have four tips for physical wellness, and then we'll bring on some of the people who um, are patiently waiting to give their stories or share some information. And so uh, first tip is hygiene. We never consider that something we never, you know, talk about it or, you know, make it. Who who the hell? But the, the the word hygiene, so, you know, you got to make sure that you're cleansing your physical body, um, mm-hmm. you're sanitizing your home and work areas, like we have to be vigilant in our hygiene. Um, you know, we, we don't always take that serious and until like last year when COVID hit and all of a sudden it was you know are you making sure you're doing this are you you know doing that and it's like you should have been doing those things we have to be vigilant and y'all been nasty I knew it (laughs) and our hygiene like it's a a must you know I went in 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 two ladies on the phone they've been in my house before and you know people come over my and I have a lot of white area and or beige i have a yes, lot of lightness and it's so all white <laughs> and so <laughs> i ain't eat nothing in her house. <laughs> and so you will quickly be able to see physically if there's um let's say dirt but you can't see germs germs you can't see so that would just but i know if i'm making sure that i'm spraying everything down with vinegar like that is my jam i spray everything with vinegar i give me this because it kills bacteria yeah you have a little vinegar smell in your house for a minute but you know what it'll dry up and it'll be gone be you know it's like like light of incense throw some essential oil in it done um, it, it makes me think about, and I don't remember what movie this was, but when, uh, I think it was my Greek wedding or something and, and the person's thing was Windex and they sprayed everything with Windex. Like I spray everything with, with vinegar. Um, so make sure that your hygiene, not just your physical body, but your, your, uh, extended everything, like make sure that you're vigilant and keeping that clean and sanitized movement now you all just talked about movement um a lot in this conversation what you got to move it move it you got to what move it um (laughs) so 
exercise your body to release stress. Uh, massage yourself. Give yourself self massages to circulate your blood, your blood and your energy. Uh, breathe. We did a, a breathing um, exercise, meditation exercise uh, a few weeks ago. It may, well, it might have been the whole of last year. It was done in 2020. Um, and that helps to release stress and your emotions. And I would even add in there, and I know we are at kind of a critical time in our existence where traveling isn't the um, height of the things that we want to do right now, maybe, but travel or move to other areas like movement is important. So, you know, again, Cicely and I are not from the areas that we are in right now. We're both from Chicago, but as she said, she's lived in DC. She's lived where I am now. She is in LA. Like move, get, I always tell people, get off your block. Like you should see more than what you, you started off with because there's so much out there that will help expand you as a person. Just movement so move around travel go on vacations and again like I said I know this is you know COVID is 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 high right now so I know I'm not popping on a plane if I don't have to I'm not doing any leisure travel but um I just, <laughs> but, but there are some people who are but just make sure that in your lifetime you you get that done you do that um <clears throat> Then we have three, we have organization. Uh, make sure that you're removing clutter from your physical space. Um, if anybody is familiar or even not familiar, check out Feng Shui. They give different methods of how you should move things around your house. If you have a lot of, um, let's say, square items, you need to throw in some circular items to get that energy moving. Like, you should have plants here. but and, and again, everything doesn't have to be so restrictive to every single item, but just start utilizing some different ways of how you can move things in your home to um, successfully help with the flow of energy. And then last but not least, which is uh, one of my favorites, and I, a lot of people are like, I'm not ready for that, which is minimalism. Yes, minimalism. Let something I'm people. Go. It's me. No, I'm not. I'm not letting it go. No, sorry. Let some things go. Give it away. Give a, give away things that you don't need. Give away things you don't use. Only keep the things that bring you extreme joy, happiness. And I know you're going to say, but it all brings me happiness and joy. It Not does. if you haven't used it in a couple years. It doesn't. You really don't like it. You have dissed it. Get out of my books. <laughs> you know what? Just even with giving away the things that you don't need. You can't even give away, and I can't believe this is coming out of my mouth, y'all. You can even give away the things that you do love because the things that you love and you give it away, it's going gonna, it's gonna to sting. It's going to sting at first. I, I know it's going to sting because I sure had to give away a few shoes and dresses that I didn't, I was like, but I will use them next year. But it, still, give away the things that you like as well. Because some because you love those things so much, the next person that's gonna buy them or get them or receive them is gonna love them just as much and then some. So I mean, I it, give it, it away, but I go right back and buy it. So why give it away? <laughs> <laughs> now I'm I'm playing y'all. I, I do like get rid of things a lot because clearly in my what I call California closet, this little space here, and you I have no choice but to get rid of things. And, you know, it is sometimes hard to part with it. And then, don't, but don't let somebody have your stuff on and you like it, like, oh, I remember that. <laughs> Give it back, right? Right. <laughs> like, right. And then they, they take all the good pictures in it. Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> you be sorry. It's not photogenic at all. And it's, ooh. Yeah, but <laughs> I still gave, but I gave it with a pure heart though. But then when I see it again, I still be like, mm. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm, but yes. I'm ready to throw some shade. It's okay. Give it away. It, don't be like me, guys. Give freely, please. Give away, give away, give away now. And uh, then also, lastly, as part of the minimalism, uh, reduce the amount of products that you use. Um, before we came on, 
Cicely was sharing with me um, because I am, and I'm, this is my first announcement for many, I am locking my hair and this is my second lock journey. Some people never saw me with my first lock journey. So they're like, you're locking for the second time, but I'm locking for the second time. And um, actually tomorrow will mark my uh, two month lock journey. So two, two tomorrow, <laughs> two, two tomorrow. Um, <laughs> And she was showing me um, a product that literally just had like rose water, distilled water and some essential oils in it as something to use for my hair. And, you know, we have to start using less things. Stop trying to use a whole bunch of stuff to pile up on our skin to pile up because our skin is our biggest organ and it allows our body to get actually the most amount of oxygen within it. And so if we have all these heavy lotions on it now, I know they smell good and feel good and all that. But if we're like having all these layers of things on our body, we can't actually breathe and we can't take in what we need to. So we need to just, you know, not have as much um, products. If we're, you know, cleaning up our house, again, things may smell good or whatever, but what are, what is in those products and what other damage can it be doing um, to our body? So let's think about doing less with all the products that we're using in our hygiene experience. So I know you say, well, you told me I got to, you know, focus on cleaning and sanitizing. Now you telling me don't use, but you know, a few things. Yes, exactly. That's exactly what I'm saying. So um, those were just some really quick highlights. You know, we can't go into super detail about every single thing because then we would be here past our one hour mark. But um, just like with Cicely, I'm sure at some point in time, we will continue to have these conversations and get deeper into them. But right now, this month, we wanted to just um, be more introductive of some of those things and give some tips. And then as we continue to go and you all continue to, you know, watch and learn, you'll learn even more things. So that's what I have, we have about 20 minutes left. So questions, comments, suggestions. We have one more person left. We had a couple people on, but I guess they had to go. They didn't, they were not able to stay on um, for the entire time. But thank you for those people who joined us on our Zoom call. I'm sorry that we didn't, we were not able to get to you all so that you could um, make some of your comments. Mm -hmm. Put them in our email. Send us a Snapchat, a group chat, or whatever. Still, you can yeah. still talk to us and comment. Yeah. Hey, girl. Uh, uh, hey. Girl, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. I'm here. <laughs> what you got to say? <laughs> Mama Val is in the house. Look, this is my doctor, my nurse, my psychiatrist, my lawyer. <laughs> Listen, she know it all. Let me tell it. Unmute yourself, girl. Struggle okay. <laughs> Stop smiling to say what you got to say. <laughs> I was just, you know, I, I was just gone for a second over at the, the Copper Center yeah. to, to register for the kids. But anyway, I was listening to, you know, the cleansing things and everything. And the thing that was coming to my mind was sometimes... You can cleanse the outside, but if you don't cleanse the inside, it's almost like it contaminates the outside. Mm -hmm. So it's like, sometimes you gotta, you gotta do a thorough cleaning of your mind, your thoughts, and just clean away, get some of the, the, the cobwebs out of your mind and some old mindsets and everything and, and kind of move into a, a new thing. It's like with each new year, you should have a new attitude, a new behavior a new characteristic that you pick up that's positive in your life so not only are you just cleansing the outside but once you start cleaning the inside it'll help you and encourage you to clean the outside get a colonic too too. all the insides all that i mean you know all that like the the insides and like i said you know we could go on like no different than last week's mental wellness we could go on and on and on but just some a, a simple salt flush. Um, I know people, what is that? You can, look, you can Google it, salt flush. And it's a, it's a very gentle 
um, way to clean out your inside. Just very gentle way. Now, it, it does it taste salty? Yes, it does taste salty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I, I've, I've had people ask me um, that I personally know, you know, that may have high blood pressure. They say, well, I have high blood pressure. You know, I'm not supposed to have, you know, all of that salt. But you ate all that fried chicken. Oh, sorry. sorry. That's not <laughs> that the, the, it, the salt flush um, is not going to harm you in that way. And, and, and you can actually look up Dr. Axe, um, A-X-E. He has a salt flush. So if you feel more comfortable that a doctor has recommended what this salt flush is and the recipe for it, because it's pink Himalayan salt, uh, it's water and that's it. Oh, and then I've seen some recipes and that you add some lemon. And I like the one where you add a little bit of lemon because it it doesn't taste as salty. Um, but lemon is also a detoxer. So those are yeah, you can you can you can detox um, in that manner. Uh, when we talk about uh, even another physical way of from the inside out, as Miss Val was t telling us, turn off the TV. Stop watching TV. As a matter of fact, shout out. And let's go ahead and talk about your book real quick because I've been reading your book. I'm on page 70. Go ahead, shout your book out. <laughs> My girl. Look, we ain't said girl. I like I have to get up and go in my room and get it, but right, I just had it over here. Hold on. We can't hear you. You can't can get my unmute off fast enough. Okay. Yeah, you know what? I'm telling you, that book was resonating in my head for months. And it just seemed like every time I sat down, more and more just came out, just came out. And I was able to just pick up where I left off. And after I, I published the book and everything, I had afterthoughts about it, what I could have, should have, would have did to increase it. But Starting Five was a book and it was about sharing how people change and you change sometimes without knowing and that your environment has a big influence on you. And that, you know, through it all, if you have something positive in your life and something that you have to look forward to, it changes your whole aspect on, your, on how you look at everything. Mm -hmm. And when you, when you can wake up in the morning and just be happy just because you woke up, it's, it's different than you waking up and saying, oh my God, I got a 15 things I got to do. Oh my goodness. And you know, it right. changed your whole perspective. Sometimes you just got to do that, that cleansing, meditating is, yeah. you know, and I, I'm sure you are a champion of that one, but meditating sometimes just will help you stay focused, stay grounded, stay rooted. And so when, when things come that are crazy, you are now at the point where you, you're like, okay, wait, let me just take a breath. Let me breathe. Cause I know this too shall pass. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah. There's so many things that are, that are, that we need to do. And as women, we're constantly being pulled on. And if you just happen to have children in your, in your environment, then it just is, is twice as the much pulling as, you know, because, because they look for you for everything. You are their everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's almost like you're a never ending sprout that just keeps sprouting out. You sprout out direction, you sprout out goodness, you sprout out love, you sprout out you know, food, everything. So all of that is just like, just taking from you, take, take, take. And if you don't find a way to replenish it, it drains you mm -hmm. and then you feel empty and then you have nothing to give and you become bitter. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I wanted to start thinking about, you know, so since we've touched on uh, mental wellness last week and now, you know, we're talk talking about physical wellness this week, just that yin and yang. So in yoga, yang is physical, whatever physical movement. Um, it could be something rough, hard. And yin is thinking about something that's soft. It could be the inside the mind. And you want to start balancing those things out. So for instance, if I know I've had an extremely mentally draining day. Um, I want to try to do something physical in my day to balance it out because I need to get something in. And if 
I know that I'm having a, um, a, a lot of physical activity taking place that day, then I may want to like maybe not watch TV. I want to read. So I want to do something a little gentle. So I try to do something every day. But that means that you really have to be aware mm -hmm. of what you're doing um, in your day and in your space to try to make sure that you're balancing those two off. So we have about 10 more minutes left and I want to make sure that we shout out what we're doing next week because we're working. We're going to be talking about our spiritual wellness, which is Miss Stephanie is going to be talking. Oh, look, and then I moved to the side to show my little Buddha. Like, I did not do that on purpose. Uh, <laughs> like... Uh. So, so Miss Stephanie is going to talk to us about um, our spiritual wellness. Looking forward uh, to hearing what she has to say because um, we are not just one body; we are multiple bodies, and we are probably even more than what we talk about in terms of, you know, physical, spiritual, mental. But that's all we're gonna incorporate. <laughs> so, but we're probably multiple bodies beyond that. Um, any anything else? Any about? Oh, you know what? The thirteenth, right? We have the thirteenth where we have our. Um, our paint and sip events. Right. Um, mm -hmm. So everybody make sure that you get your uh, your kits Order. and you can you can get that from get looking at our newsletter. And I'm also gonna try to uh, this weekend set up a, a specific event bright um, about for that event. Um, and that's all you have to do is just purchase your kit. I don't have, I have my kit here, but it's in another room. Everything would require, everything is like, oh, Ciara, go to another room to get it. But I, I have, 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 oh, do you have yours? I no, do. I don't. It'll be here next week. Oh, I okay. do. I have mine. It's still in the box, though. I didn't unbox it. Don't oh, judge me. Mine is, <laughs> mine is, mine is outside of the box, but it's in the plastic because I, I wanted to yeah. freshly, you know, tear it open once um, our event started. But um, yes, it will require some movement, which, you know, right now I, I'm, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> but uh, so we have that coming up. And it would, again, always let us know what other things you all want to hear about in terms of um, self-care so that we can talk about those things as mm -hmm. well. So, um, yeah, that's all I got. That's all I got. It, this that was enough. So, That's all I got. We appreciate yeah, you. Go ahead, so, Stephanie, because she sounds like she got something yeah, to say. Yeah, I got like, but hold on, hold on. I got about five yeah, more minutes on it. <laughs> yeah. For all you ladies and even gentlemen that's on our uh Live You nonprofit page. Um, when you guys look at this video after you watch it, do me a favor, rearrange your living room. Change that living room around just because you don't have nothing to do. I mean, we all sitting at home anyway, turn off the TV, just rearrange what your living room looks like. When you do that, your perception will definitely change. It will, it will. It will definitely change. It, it's a different view. It doesn't matter if it looked like that but since you've been in that place. Just change your living room around. Give it, <laughs> give it some new energy coming in. I'm, so, I'm thank you for yeah, saying that because I'm always moving stuff around in my house. You came to my house last weekend and you were like, "Is this new? Is this new?" And I said, "No, it's not new. It was in the other room." And you were like, "Are you sure?" And I'm like, "I come. You can come and look in the other room and see that it's missing." No, I said that because it wasn't white, and I was like, "Oh, I ain't never seen this. What's going on?" <laughs> what did you put that there by mistake? <laughs> I don't see a fingerprint or nothing. Where is this? <laughs> definitely can't and she'd be like you coming up i can't bring my kids over there i'm not coming <laughs> we'll meet you camita's downstairs because <laughs> i'm not responsible because listen <laughs> but yeah well shouts out to me i got a new house built woo, from the woo, ground woo, woo, woo. She did. go nuts boo Love so she been rearranging re i'm talking about good fresh energy in that thing mm -hmm. go ahead 
That's good. That's good. Yeah. Happy, happy New Year to you. Right. Long so we got to have a little time. girls thing over here when everybody gets in town. Oh, oh, oh. Judgment. Oh. What? <laughs> <laughs> I well, come rearrange my space then. Because it ain't no. I have room. room. Look, I have room <laughs> to host a small little gathering. So if y'all want to do hey. something here, we can, you know, have other women come in and join us. Oh, I love that. That would be so fun. Oh, yes, you, see, you all can see us in, in one space. That I like that. I like that. Yes. All right. So now, now we gotta we gotta plan something off offline. We gotta plan something now. I'm excited about that. Don't be, you text my mama. Don't call me because I'm not there. Okay, <laughs> Cicely, because she said, listen, she said, not me. <laughs> all righty, ladies. Well, I want to thank you all for coming, and I want to thank the audience for joining us um, live, as well as for the people who will go back and see this. Um, Again, always, thank you, thank you, thank you. Follow us on our different social media. We're on Instagram, we're on YouTube, we're on Facebook. Um, make sure you come to our uh, website, liveyou.org, and sign up for our newsletter. You find out different things that's going on, not just with us, but um, we also feature other nonprofit stuff that's going on. So there's... Um, a financial wellness workshop that's happening. Um, they're doing something every month. Uh, again, we have that uh, linked on our website and it's in our newsletter. So you have- you Also, uh, click on the um, free 15 minute consultation as well. Yes, free Y'all know y'all won't talk to us. <laughs> Come on now. Come on now. 15, con- <laughs> 15, uh, that's a mouthful, free 15 minute consultation. So if you want to say something to us very specific and asking some questions, you know, you all can definitely do that. So we have those things available. So please come on down. We're here for you. Come on down. <laughs> and also come the down topic. So the price is right. <laughs> and also topic. Give us a topic if uh, to discuss that you all want to hear that's popular or that we haven't touched on. Give us a topic and we'll mm-hmm. discuss it. Yes. Agreed. Mental, spiritual, physical, whoop, whoop, whatever you like. Whatever you like. <laughs> I'm not, I ain't that nice. Look, I'm not that nice. It's not whatever you like, but I might oblige sometimes. So, <laughs> but thank you all for joining. And listen, I'm trying to be real transparent with y'all. I told y'all, hello, bathroom. It's my time. I love y'all. Thank y'all for coming out. All righty. All righty. Love, inspire, right. and value you. Yes, Thank yes. you. Peace and blessings.